even myself, when I've received TBNT's rejections from whatever walk of life it may have been, you know, it takes a stab at my confidence. sucks when the camera focuses on me the background look how nice that is but then come back oh no <laughs> hi everybody and welcome back to another video i am alexia nicole and i'm living my life by design so you probably clicked on this video because of the title thanks but no thanks and in the aviation industry that is what we call the rejection letter. Um, it's the letter you get after, the, or I should say the email. The email that you get after you've applied and they send you the thank you but no thank you. Um, we appreciate your time coming out, um, but we have selected other candidates. We have probably all experienced that dreadful TVNT once or twice or... <laughs> so many more times than we would probably really like to admit but the reality of it is is that it's a part of the progress so i'm not going to say that this was a really highly requested video because it wasn't but i do often get questions um via instagram and email like what did i do wrong what can i do better next time so i just figured why not put this video out here so let's go ahead and jump into what I think is the best ways to overcome the TBNT and keep moving forward to that CJO. So if some of you all have been watching my vlogs from the beginning, you may know my story of how I finally got to the point of a CJO. And I'm not one of these vloggers that you watch that just got it on my first try. That's definitely not me. So let me just quickly, because I don't want this video to be too long. So let me just quickly tell you my process um, and then I will get into my key points of how to get over the rejection and get the CJL. So I believe I had the, the inkling, the want to become a flight attendant, I think during college, or if it wasn't exactly during college, I know definitely was right after college. I was working, um, as a manager at a department store right after college and I remember this lady, she would always come in and she would always be so cute, so sharp. You know, I loved her shoes. And I just asked her one day, I was like, what is it that you do for a living? And she was like, oh, I'm a flight attendant. And I know from that moment, you know, I was just so enamored with the whole idea of being a flight attendant. So that had to at least been in 2010 or 2011 because that's when I was working at that store. Um, and I would apply. You know, I applied and I applied and I applied. I'm from Houston, so I applied to an airline that was based there. And that was really the only airline that I was applying to. And before they even started doing video, this was before video interviews were even like the thing to do. Um, that wasn't even a part of the process then. And I had, you know, done the online application, did the assessment, got past all of that. Then I got to the face-to-face -face interview and I just froze like I was horrible and I would apply every year after that because you know you have to wait that certain period of time before you could apply again and blah blah so every year for literally about almost six years seven years you know um I just kept I couldn't get past the video interview you know so after that first interview that I went to every time I applied after that they had they had introduced the video interview portion so I don't know if it was myself because my I've worn my hair short like this for a long time um, I would just get really nervous you know recording the videos um, I could never get my thoughts out so it took me a very long time to even get to the point of getting invited back to a face-to-face -face interview so I went for about six to seven years of rejection, rejection, rejection. And I was honestly only applying to one airline. Maybe every now and then I would put in for another one, but I didn't really want that because in my mind, I only wanted to be based at home in Houston. Little did I know, right? <laughs> um, so eventually my career path just went a different way than I had planned during college. Um, and I got to the point where I was doing real estate and I loved it. 
but I still had this inkling to be a flight attendant. So eventually what I decided to do was get online and start doing some real research saying, okay, what is it that I'm doing wrong? What is it that I'm, you know, what am I doing right? Um, I joined some great Facebook groups and it opened my eyes to a whole nother world of airlines. You know, of course we all know the big three, but you know, there's so many more airlines out here that you can apply to. So that's what happened. I applied to other airlines and it started giving me practice and I've made it to more and more face to faces. And eventually I got to the point where I found the airline that's near and dear to my heart. Um, I did what I had to do. I studied their core values. Um, I really, really liked their core values. I really, really liked the culture of the airline and it matched me really well way better than the airline that I was applying to that I could never even get to a face-to-face -face for. So anyways, long story short, I put in the time, I put in the work, and I got the CJO. But the whole point of this video is, is that I had to learn to overcome rejection. So let's go into, I have about four to five different points of what I personally think is the best way to overcome the TBNT, the rejection letter, and move forth and still be positive all right okay. so let's get into it. so you know during the whole point of being in the application process i know for me every time my email would buzz i would jump and be like oh my god is it is it the airline you know and i would dread the title of i would dread the subject line of the email like you can always tell by the subject line of the email so anyway so of course more times than i would really like to admit it was always the okay now i can't remember what the subject line said but once you the first few lines of the email you knew automatically the thank you but no thank you so and then it stabs you in the heart you feel like you're dying you know you think that the world is over because you got a tv and t you don't think there's anything else you can do ever again I'm here to tell you baby boy or baby girl like let's keep trucking it because we can't allow that to stop us right <laughs> so you know i always wonder like why does the no hurt so bad like we blow it out of proportion so much as human beings we let the word no weigh so heavily on our life and we just should not right like we have to learn to allow the no to just happen and keep moving forward so the next best thing is to just actually think of the reality of the situation. Don't overgeneralize the situation, accusing yourself of being incapable of ever getting another job. Like that is not the attitude or mindset that we want to have. We have to stop letting no, you know, be blown out of proportion and just let it be a motivator instead of something that's going to kill your dreams. Because no is just a two letter word, like it ain't nothing. Instead of thinking, oh no, I'll never get to where I wanna be, say, oh no, like, yeah, new opportunity. No stands for new opportunity. So the new opportunity is to apply to another airline or look at some other things to do in aviation. But that is my first key to getting over the TBNT. Think of the reality of the situation and do not let the no weigh so heavily on your heart okay? okay the second thing is like I was telling you all about my process clearly it's a part of the process to be denied it's a hard fact I'm gonna say it's a hard fact I don't I don't I don't know about y'all but I have been denied from many of jobs I have experienced rejection outside of the aviation industry at other jobs as well so it is pretty much a hard fact that you are not going to land every single job that you apply for if you've landed every single job that you apply for, go ahead and like this video, put a little hand raise in the comments, and then I will give you your kudos because kudos to you. You are doing something awesome. But if you are, for lack of better words, the average person, you're not going to get every single job that you apply for. I don't know anybody that has. <laughs> so we have to learn to let go of the need of a guaranteed outcome. You know, like we cannot always guarantee that the outcome is going to be what we want it to be. That's just not the way that life goes. The dice doesn't always roll the way that you want it, correct? For those of you that like to go to Vegas and gamble and you roll the dice and then it's not what you want to see, right? Like, 
applying for a job is almost in my mind like the same sense of gambling you may or you may not get it i hope you got backup ideas or backup companies or whatever the case may be so once you let go of the need for a guaranteed outcome this allows your brain to open up to the idea of other job opportunities other companies, other things in aviation that might just get you through the door to that position that is your goal position. Sometimes we just have to learn to step back, reevaluate and say, okay, well, this way isn't working for me. Maybe right now at this time, I don't have the experience that they're looking for. So let me do something that will build myself to get to what they're looking for. You know, we have to think realistically here, right? If you're looking at your resume and you don't see an ounce of customer service on there and you know that it's something that they're going to be looking for, then say, hey, let me put in a, a year of time to get this under my belt and then I can go back. Or whatever, whatever it is that you feel that you might be missing or whatever you feel that you could get some experience under yourself to make yourself a better candidate for the goal job, which is flight attendant probably if you're watching this the third thing that i want to hit on to overcome that tbnt is to stop over analyzing that rejection you know and i can say this but i do it too because we're human right we're human we sit there and once you leave the interview you're just like dang i could have did this better oh i should have said that or oh i could have worn this look you know if you in your heart believe that you gave this 100% of your efforts, you did everything that you could, do not kill yourself over analyzing the situation that you can't go back and change. There's nothing you can do. You can't, you can't go back in time. I'm sorry. It's not happening. We're not going back in time. You can't go back to the recruiter and say, oh, I want to change my answer to this question. It's not a possibility. So do not kill yourself with the overanalyzation of what you should and should not have done. All that overanalyzing does is keeps your mindset in the past. And there's no way to move forward to the future if we're just going to keep replaying the past. Like we have to let the past be and look forward to the future. Now, I'm a person that I think I'm naturally confident, but even myself, when I've received TBNT's rejections from whatever walk of life it may have been, you know, it takes a stab in my confidence, but we have to learn to build our self-esteem back up, okay? So the best way I think to do that is to write down a bragging list okay your bragging rights make a bragging list about things that you've you've accomplished in work environments things that you're proud of and use those to build key stories of how you've overcome obstacles and keep reminding yourself that you can do better you will do better you know you've accomplished things in the past and you can keep moving forward you know just do not get too down on yourself. So if you need to write that on your mirror in the morning, your bragging list and say, oh, I did this and oh, I've done that. And oh, I'm the girl or oh, I'm that guy. Like do it to keep your mindset in a good place, right? And then the other good thing about that is that once you get to your next interview, once that next opportunity presents itself, you'll have perfect stories, star formatted answers to tell your recruiters because you already know what it is that you can accomplish and what you have to offer that airline and whatever it is that you're applying to. My fourth one really just kind of piggybacks off of what I was just saying, but definitely, definitely recognize your strengths and abilities. Recognizing your strengths and abilities can definitely shift you from being bummed and downed and hurt and acting like you can't never get a job to being excited about the thought of what is the next possibility. So definitely do that. I think those are the key tips to being able to overcome rejection and move forth past that TBNT and earn that CJ. Oh, yeah. Right, I hope y'all enjoyed those four or five-ish key tips to overcoming the TBNT. Um, but if you are, you know, currently right now in the process of applying to hopefully multiple airlines and not just putting all your eggs in one basket and betting on this one airline. Cause one, y'all have to remember these airlines literally receive thousands of applications, not 1000, but you know, I've heard of airlines receiving 40,000 applications within four days, y'all. So 
you know, I personally don't really like to think about the competition, but you have to be realistic with yourself and say, okay, you know, just because you got a TBNT doesn't mean you weren't great for the job. It just might mean that you weren't great for that airline's job. So let's move on to another one, you know, because everybody can't get the job. Just at the end of the day, everybody cannot get the job and maybe not at that specific time. Maybe that airline is for you, but maybe it's not your time right, right? Timing is everything. So just let's just remain positive. Um, please don't let these TVNTs get you down. Let's just remain positive. If you feel like you are burnt out on applying, because I know this process is time consuming because you have to fill out the application and the applications themselves take a good 20, 30 minutes putting in all your work history and all that. Then you have to do the assessment where you need time for your brain to really think and answer these questions the right way. Then you have to do the video interview and make sure that you're looking all good and professional in the video interview. And then if you make it that far, you got to go to the face to face and you have to really wow them there. And that takes so much of your energy. So I understand if you are burnt out because I was burnt out at one point in time. So I respect it if you say, okay, let me take a few months off from applying. Let me focus on this. Let me, you know, gain my, um, my energy back and then I get back into it. And maybe that is just what you need to overcome the TBNT. And in that next cycle of applications, you'll earn that CJO. You'll get those wings and you'll be in the air with me one day, right? So anyways, I truly hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope that it kind of gives you some, some hope or some insight on what to do. I'm going to go ahead and tag my playlist of um, how to become a flight attendant interview process. Um, if you've never watched those videos, I personally think that they're pretty good on guiding you in the right steps and the right directions of how to actually get through the process. Um, starting with the application, the assessment, the video interviews, and the final face-to-face. Um, -face. So anyways, guys, go ahead and watch those videos just to refresh your memory. Until next time, make sure you subscribe, like, and share.